Welcome back. Former President Trump is now facing more than a half a dozen criminal and civil proceedings. Intelligence officials have resumed their national security risk assessment of the classified documents that the FBI sees from Mar-a-Lago. Trump's attorneys have until Friday to back up these claims that he's been making that the FBI, quote, planted evidence during its search of his Florida home. Mr. Trump has so far offered no proof of that. The New York Attorney General, Letitia James, filed a civil lawsuit this week accusing Trump and his family of financial fraud through the Trump Organization. She also made a criminal referral to the Southern District of New York and the Internal Revenue Service. In Georgia, Trump's demand to, quote, find 11,780 votes, that's being investigated by the Fulton County District Attorney. And, of course, Attorney General Merrick Garland, Justice Department probe, is investigating the events leading up to the January 6th insurrection. And the January 6th committee will meet on Wednesday for what may be its final public hearing. Those are just some of the legal challenges facing the former president. I couldn't make this introduction comprehensive or we'd run out of time. So joining me now is a member of the January 6th committee. It's Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland. Congressman Raskin, nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Press. Let me start with uh, something that's getting a lot of buzz on social media. It's going to be on tonight's episode of 60 Minutes. Former member of Congress Denver Riggleman, who was an investigator, has made uh, the following uh, um, charge. Take a listen. When you see that the White House switchboard had connected to a rioter's phone while it's happening, that's a big, pretty big aha moment. You get an aha. Wait a minute. Someone in the White House was calling one of the rioters while the riot was going on? On January 6th, absolutely. And you know who both ends of that call? I only know one end of that call. I don't know the White House end. It's an alarming finding. What can you confirm? What can you tell us about it? Well, that's one of thousands of details that obviously the committee is aware of. And our job is to put everything into a comprehensive portrait and narrative timeline of what took place. And um, so, uh, you know, to me, it's interesting, but um, much less interesting than the fact that Donald Trump told the crowd in public, mm -hmm. you got to fight like hell, and if you don't, you're not going to have a country anymore. Um, so, look, we're, we're interested in telling the big story, which is this was an organized, premeditated, deliberate hit against the vice president and the Congress to overthrow the 2020 presidential election. And I think the public understands the basic elements of the story. What we're going to do on Wednesday is fill in those details that have come to the attention of the committee over the last five or six weeks. This, this apparently says a call came from inside the White House. I mean, how hard have you guys tried to track down who that person was? you have an idea of who it was? Um, I, you know, I, I can't say anything specific about that particular call, but we are aware of it. Uh, and we're aware of lots of contacts between uh, people in the White House and different people that were involved, obviously, in the, the coup attempt and mm -hmm. the insurrection. And that's really what all of our hearings have been about. Um, you know, we've had more than 20 hours explaining that this was an organized, coordinated attempt to subvert the electoral process and to substitute the will of a minority for the will of the majority that was expressed where Joe Biden beat uh, Donald Trump by more than 7 million votes right. in 306 to 232 in the Electoral College. Is this the last public hearing? It, it may be the last uh, investigative public hearing uh, where we're going to try to round out the factual narrative. Uh, I'm hopeful, speaking just as one member, that we mm -hmm. will have a hearing that lays out all of our legislative recommendations about mm -hmm. how to prevent coups, insurrections, political violence and electoral sabotage in the future, because this is a clear and present danger that's continuing up right to this day. Remember, January 6th was the culmination of a long process to interfere with people's right to register to vote, mm -hmm. to vote, to get the votes counted properly and so on. So we need to deal with every aspect of the attack on our electoral process. You say you're going to fill in some blanks. I assume Secret Service communication is, is one of those blanks from January 6th. How confident do you have how full is your picture now on January 6th? Um, well, it's not complete because there have been efforts to undermine the investigation, obviously. But uh, I think that on the Secret Service record side, we've gotten some Teams communications and some mm -hmm. other electronic communications that help us uh, to complete our understanding of what was taking place on January the 6th. I mean, there was clearly an effort to get Vice President Pence to step outside of his constitutional role, to mm. vaporize electoral college votes from Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Georgia, and then 
eventually just to drive him out of the building to make something else happen so that Trump could be continued against the constitutional will of the people for another four years. Will you have the interviews of Ginny Thomas and Newt Gingrich in hand before this hearing on Wednesday? Um, I, I, I doubt that, uh, but I think that there, there's an agreement in place uh, with Jenny Thomas to come and talk, and so the committee is very interested. So what happens to the information you find out from her if there's no hearing? When, when would we find, um, yeah. with the, you know, if it was necessary to tell the story, when would we find out about Well, that? in this investigation, I've learned to say never say never. I, I wouldn't say definitively there's not going to be another hearing. Yeah. Uh, my expectation is this will be the last investigative hearing. But our report is all about giving the information to Congress and the American people about what needs to be done. And if relevant information mm -hmm. surfaces in that interview or any others, we will include it. I want to play something the former president said at his rally this weekend. Take a listen to what he said. And I thought, actually, because Liz Cheney was so badly defeated, I thought that January 6th would go away. And I think it is going away, actually. And I want to ask you about that. If Republicans take control of Congress, this probe goes away. Um, are you going to have a report out before Election Day for the voters to decide whether they should factor that in into their decision about who controls Congress? Uh, but our plan is to d complete our report before the end of this Congress, before but not the end before of this the session. Um, I don't know whether we'll, it will be done then, but our commitment is to get it done by the end of this Congress. You know, the House of Representatives, unlike the Senate, ends every two years and mm -hmm. a completely new Congress comes in. So that's the, the end of our lease on life. And so we need to get it out to the people. When he says that the, that uh, Liz's loss in the primary means the end of the January 6th, yeah. uh, you know, wouldn't it be nice from his perspective? But uh, he's absolutely wrong about that. He, he has clamped down on people's ability to talk about what happened right. within the Republican Party. But America is very focused on what happened. So if the Democrats hold the Senate, though, you'll know this in December. And if Democrats hold the Senate, or Democrats lose the House, do you send your investigative materials over to the Judiciary Committee and Dick Durbin? Well, we're going to make sure that our investigative materials are uh, made public and are available for uh, the future, and we're going to preserve them. We're not going to allow them to be destroyed. But it's my understanding, the investigation, I, I'm told you've got so much evidence that you can't finish this up by the end of the calendar year. You do need more time. The president could create a committee by executive order to finish this job. And Liz Cheney not going to be in Congress. Maybe she's one of the co-chairs. Yeah. Do you do that to preserve this investigation? Look, it would have been a lot better <clears throat> had uh, Donald Trump essentially not gotten the Republicans in right. the House to veto the creation of an independent 9-11 style commission. But we're going to make sure that... Uh, the, all of the evidence is preserved, but the main thing is this coming Wednesday at 1 p.m. and in our report, we want America to understand there was a premeditated, deliberate hit on American democracy, an attempt to override the will of the people, and the forces that supported that are still out there and would gladly do it again. And a lot of them are running for high offices like Mastriano in right. uh, Pennsylvania. These are people who are election deniers who are committed basically to their party winning yeah. regardless of who actually won the election. Are you more confident today than you were three months ago that the Justice Department is pretty focused on this in January 6th investigation? Well, absolutely. It's become clear that the Department of Justice is going to be following all of these crimes and that nobody gets a special exception because yep. they're a former president of the United States. You know, there are constitutions around the world which say that a former president can't uh, be subject to the rule of law. Ours is not one of them. Uh, a former president in America is just a citizen. Jamie Raskin, Democrat from Maryland, part of the January 6th committee. Thanks for coming on and sharing your views with us, sir. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.